My name is Roland Jung. I just want to check out something with you. Again, efficient engineering is when a plan becomes a plan. Remember that panel that we talked about a little bit earlier? I believe I even have it here uh, under the e-view, and this is the panel. So we, we actually made the size a little bit bigger. And then we had some requests here. One of them was to add a motor in this area here. So let's go and see how far my colleagues did this in ePlan. So technically, I'm going to open the same project again. And inside this project, I will be checking this add motor just to see, you know, if how far we are. And I can see here, oops, it's already in draft mode, so it has been done. We have a new motor. Um, this new motor, what is the horsepower rating that we uh, needed? So this is something that we can set very quickly. If we want a two horsepower, three horsepower, 10 horsepower, we can choose. This is just basically a setting here. And this will uh, automatically assign different objects, uh, different parts, different devices to each of these components. So we're all good on that side. So what I can see also is that these devices, we um, should look at the numbering of the devices. If we want this NFPA based, we want those numbers to be actually assigned with the correct device tag. Um, so let's just take away the revision markers to drill this down and check it out. Do I need some wire numbering? Wire numbering seems to be all nice and handy. Let's check out this terminal strip. Whoops, something's wrong about that. You know, when we do terminal, terminal strips, we usually tend to align them all in one line. If we do not align them in one line, then this becomes a new terminal strip. It could actually be a new terminal strip. So if you recall last time, we had a TV1, TV10, and if this is a new set of terminals, because it is, I could actually take the next one available, a TV2 like this, for these terminals. Now, do I want to keep the terminal designation 18, 19, 20? Maybe not. Maybe we want to number these <clears throat> just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like this, boom. Perfect. Now, one thing that is probably not correct either is when we look at the terminal strip, I most likely will have to add some accessories before and after. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the Phoenix Contact tool here very quickly. And I'm going to ask Phoenix Contact here, the TV2, well, you know, since we're there, why don't we do all of them at the same time, TB1, TB2, TB10, TB24, and just have Phoenix Contact evaluate what type of end pieces, uh, so like these, these isolating plates we need, uh, what kind of end brackets we need, what kind of uh, clip fix and maybe labels we need. Phoenix Contact knows that best. All I did is primarily just place those terminals they do have a part number and Phoenix Contact, this particular tool here, Project Complete, I've spoken about it a couple of different times in the past. This is able, this tool is able of cleaning up my terminal strip. So I just have a new terminal strip. I will have it cleaned um, straight out of the box here and I don't necessarily have to do anything about it. See, it's already finished at this point. You know, it's importing back the data into ePlan and it just cleans it up. So we'll actually see what happened at when it's finished. And I will show you the same terminal strip TB2 that I just created, and I'll show you what it actually did. So first of all, it actually connects here the terminal itself, um, but far most important is this here. It added a terminal, like a clip fix. It also added uh, like an isolating plate. Now, when you look at the pictures themselves, um, you can actually take a look here and you'll see we added ex extra parts. So we added this isolating plate and we added this clip fix. And this will reflect, if we go further, before we do so, don't, let's just close that page. Say, so, okay, we uh, uh, checked the new motor. Boom. So the new motor is done. 
I can even go here on eView and tell everyone, okay, this new motor, um, it's actually more than approved, it's already done, okay? Uh, I checked terminals and DT, all okay. Now I will place components inside panel. So now you will see that it actually is a good thing that we have a bigger panel. So this is done. So everyone you will see that actually looks into the project into eView will know that I did this motor, although I didn't upload it yet. So no comments will come out on that side. So let's go back to our panel layout here on the front side and let's see what kind of components we still have. Well, we do have a couple of circuit breakers. We have that terminal strip that we talked about. So I, I'm going to start with this circuit breaker and try to find a spot where I can place it. Well, obviously, down here we have now some extra uh, rows that we can place. So let's see. Let's place it there. It's quite tight. Maybe we want to push it down there or we'll have to move it. I'll put it down there. Cool. Now, the circuit breaker is now gone. Now we have this relay. Let's see, this relay, can we place it there? Sure, we can place it there. <coughs> Same type of relay as the other one we have had earlier. Can we place it there? We'll have to move it most likely because you will see when I put the overload that actually fits in it, I will have a little bit of a hard time actually fitting it. So technically this overload that is here, yeah, let's see. It's not gonna it's not gonna allow me placing it really. I'll have to pretty much figure out how to place it here. And there. So it's really not that easy to place at the moment. So, uh, you know what, I'm just going to leave it at, as is and come back to it a little bit later. I'm mostly interested in these terminals that we placed, and I will place them here. Boom, nice, straight, there. We could even, if, I'm not sure if I can actually place this, this is actually a tab, a small tag that you can place right on here, right? Now, funny enough is that the way that the collision check looks at it, it will not like it because you can see here it actually writes a little bit over, but like that, that's perfect. So I have all my parts placed and let's see if I can actually route them. So the routing is probably not uh, perfect for the moment. Uh, let's see what, what else we could do to actually make this, this guy fit here. So I will actually choose the same format I have up here and I will eventually, I mean, to make it nice and perfect, I would probably extend that one, right? So I can place it up there. So let's see, could I just move my terminals around? I could easily, right? I can rethink this so I can say, let's move these ones right there, right? Here would be perfect. Let's move these guys around entirely like this. Let's move them there for the moment. And what we will do, and now look at this, this is actually the beauty. If you turn off the collision check, you can actually, and, and we are in a digital twin, so right? We don't have to necessarily adjust everything. We can just go boom, boom, just make it like this. Even though temporarily, this is all not really realistic. Let's see if I can actually click on this device and see if I can make it longer. It doesn't hack on it. It's not that easy. I'll have to basically see how I can get this. The idea was I wanted to get that strip a little bit longer. But if the strip is already installed, why don't we just place another mounting rail? So you see, I can just extend this with the second piece and we could start at the same level and just continue like that, right? No big deal. So that is now a uh, new device there. And <clears throat> of course, if we take these two and we move them, 
let's see if we move them there does it actually let's let's take this one let's move it let's have all the power together right so there we go so this is perfect and I'll take this guy and move it same thing just move it there have it exactly tied in so we still have some room and let's see if I take this guy place it right a bit surprised again about this position here because we typically have what we call mounting points these mounting aids right you do have oh it's right there okay just missed it there it is where is it here anyways I have to check it because this really is not the auxiliary that I, I want to pick on this is really the one I want but for some reason and, and typically it's not this one it's another one it's down below here the OLR but it usually places over there as if the uh, I look at this device this and this is not the same ah okay let's go and check it out so this is actually the one I need so let's just this one let's just move it here let's open the properties let's change the parts there we go that is the right part okay small mistake happen over the parts let's take a look So this one here, I just dump it there, boom. I pick the OLR, that's where it goes. There we go. So now I have the right part. Interestingly is over the 3D side here, I figured out where my component was wrong. Uh, now my components are correct here. My bill of material will be updated. If I do check very quickly and I rerun the routing, you can imagine how much the routing is different. So let's see if the routing works out fine. Um, the terminals down there I'm not even sure maybe we should move them a little bit over to the right hand side or closer to the door yeah it's all nice why not we can leave it like that it's not a problem so that would work fine and finally uh, let's update all the reports before we terminate this so I'm gonna go generate project report here we go I will take this project and of course I will upload it again as we expect on the eView so for everyone to see and I'll show you on the eView what it actually does right? uh, a little bit later next time around when I do open it so just quickly do it let's let's do a quick recap summarize parts is terminal diagrams Terminal connection diagrams, terminal lineup diagrams, connection list, connection list again, and all the cut legends are done, enclosure legends are done. So what do we update actually when we do this? You can see in a few seconds, it starts here with the bill of material. So we do have a bill of material, zoom 100%, that is entirely updated. So 100%. Then you go to kitting and you have a kitting list. This is basically, these are all the individual parts. Then we go to the ducts and rails. Ducts and rails is basically this one here. Uh, just a cut list for those. We have a drill view, drill drilling view. Then we have the terminal assembly again that is updated with all the new components. Um, here without the terminals, this one is with the terminals. So this is nice, perfect. Terminal lineup assembly. Let's let's take a look at the details that we got for TV2 just to show you. Remember, these were only three terminals, but it's a little bit more than that because it is a clip fix, it's a, an isolating piece, and then it's a clip fix. All that together is what makes up here for the TV2. Then finally, but not least, the labels, the wires, everything is and was updated. So perfect. 
Do we have a length for most of these items? Yes, we do. If there is one item that doesn't have a length, oh, this is basically here the ground. You know what? I haven't placed a ground bar on my panel. If I place the ground bar, I'll even have the length for the grounds. But that I leave up to the electrician. Sometimes some of these wires uh, you leave up to the electrician to actually uh, do. The rest of them, they can be pre-cut on the wire terminal. So there are two techniques here. One is the wire terminal, like the full automatic machine. So if I quickly run this down, if you look at you know this website on the second page here, Ritalin and Implant, you will see that on this second page, Ritalin and Implant, Strong Partners, we actually drilled it into the engineering sourcing manufacturing. And more precisely on the manufacturing side, if you drill in here, we talk about every single step. I just showed you the documentation that I can generate. And far more interesting is this here. Now, the wire terminal may not be exactly what you want. The more interesting thing is probably this one here. These machines will pre-cut the wires. Of course, it's not all done when you do so because you want to pre-cut the, the wire and then manually take that wire and both ends, just crimp the both ends here. Just put it in the machine, crimp, crimp. Within probably 20, 22 seconds, the wire has been taken manually from here to here. And last but not least, I would recommend in that same sequence to actually assign the wire. So if your wires here are fabricated exactly the way that the reports are handed out, I can also preload the printer with exactly the same sequence of wires. Now, the same sequence of wires will be printed automatically, as you can see here, and the same sequence of wires, as the wires are cut and you manually crimp them, you can put this label on either side of the uh, wire. And as you peel off these wires, you will have done all the labels. And very interesting, you can see every single wire label actually contains a source and the destination, source and destination. Yes, we do also print the wire designation, but certainly the source and destination. This will increase the speed of landing the wires hereafter because you just have to look at the label and you can see where you have to connect it to, right? Because previously all your devices, all these devices have been also identified inside your panel. So this I think is a pretty decent way of making your engineering efficient in how to help your manufacturing team build faster and smarter. So again, coming back to our ePlan motto, I honestly think that looking at all this here, this is a way of getting your efficient engineering when using ePlan. This was Roland from ePlan Canada. Thank you.